think, are we live? Are we live? We could be live. I'll give it a minute or two. I think we're live. <laughs> you know, at the beginning of these sessions, I must sound like I've come out of uh, the uh, the crazy house, or as we used to say in England, the lo when we were kids, the loony bin. Terrible, terrible expression, but that's what we used to say. But I must seem to be really crazy when I'm saying, are we live yet? Are we live yet? <laughs> Anyway, good morning, everybody. I'm pretty sure that we are now live. So first of all, before we begin, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Gregor, who is right here by my side, as always. And um, I would also like to say good morning, Chris. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. Are we live? Are we live? <laughs> We're live as soon as I press the button. It's just that we have to, you know, for a minute or two, wait for people to have the chance to find you and log in. All right. Right. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so, uh, how are you this morning, Chris? Well, I think I mentioned to you just a couple minutes ago, I said today was the one day during the week that I could actually maybe sleep in, but my dear little kitty Moonlight Graham decided that was not going to happen. Wow. So, you I've know... just been doing normal things. I actually woke up this morning uh, thinking about Cachorro and Nino and uh, um, every Christmas uh, on Christmas uh, for, Chris for Christmas dinner, I make uh, sausages wrapped in bacon. They are delicious. Of course, they are English sausages. Uh, what can I tell you? They're very different than the Italian sausages and they're fairly small and skinny and um, I was uh, telling the story last night. We went out for dinner with some friends. I was telling the story of how one Christmas I was in Vermont and I use a really big tray because I've got at least, let's say, 10 pounds of sausage and I don't know how many pounds of bacon, probably, you know, three or four pounds of bacon, something like that. So I'm sort of, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, taking a sausage wrapping it in bacon sticking it on the on the pan and 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 eventually this big pan sort of a fairly flat pan with a bit of a lip it sort of starts to get filled up and um and uh so at some point i'm looking at the tray of sausages and i'm thinking to myself i thought i thought i had more i thought i'd done more sausages than this carried on then a little bit later on i thought this is really weird i really thought that i had more sausages than this and then i looked down and between me and the table and the sausages on the table is a nose it's a sort of it's a brown nose it's a soft furry brown nose it's a labrador nose <laughs> And every time I put a sausage close to the edge, a little nose comes up and a little tongue comes out and the little sausage is gone. And I hadn't realised, but he'd been helping himself every now and again to, to some of the sausages, which is why I did not have sausages, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> as many sausages as I thought I was going to have. But anyway... Our animals are fantastic, aren't they? Our animals uh, are so wonderful. And uh, and I know that you really, really could have done with a lion this morning, Chris. I'm sure you really could have really relished that lion. But, you know, and, uh, you know, but when you don't have pets anymore, you don't mind. You think back and you think, you know, you think back with fondness uh, <laughs> on the awful times that, that we had with them on the times when they wouldn't uh, let us sleep and so on and so forth we look back on those times it's quite funny so you'll look back on the, this time this morning and you think well i'm really glad that i did get up early because it it meant i've got time to do the things that i perhaps wouldn't normally have had the time to do but that was very funny when when uh, when nina was uh, stealing the sausages literally from under my nose and uh, I don't know how many, but he had a pound of sausage to himself. He loved it. It was probably the best Christmas he ever had. Um, it's Christmas, everybody. Uh, a week today, there will be no story time. 
uh, there will no official story time, but there will be um, a story time going on in many, many households across the world. Stories of gifts, stories of Santa Claus, stories of angels, stories of the birth of Christ, because after all, Christmas Day is his birthday, right? The official birthday, anyway. Um, so there'll be lots of stories being told, and all this coming week, as children get more and more excited, uh, as we all get more and more excited, because I'm getting excited, really, really excited now to be in New York for Christmas. Not looking forward to the cold, but I am looking forward to being with my with my daughter and with my grandson. And, and it's just going to be so wonderful and so marvellous to just to be able to share with with other people. Chris, I know that your your kids are that you're seeing them over Christmas and you have your nephew there, too, right? Yeah. So I won't be alone. And that's fantastic. It is because. You know, when we lose someone, it's always the first, the first birthday, the first Christmas, the first Easter, the first of whatever the celebrations are that we that we have. It's, you know, it's always, you know, the first, which I think is probably the hardest to bear because it's sort of a, such a, a reminder of what happens. And it's and it's, it's a reminder that, um, you know, we don't have that one person who we want, although Chris... <coughs> You know that you do have Mike with you, don't you? I mean, you do know that. I know it's not the same, but can you imagine all those people who don't know, who who either don't believe or who don't know, and and how much tougher it is for them? Can you imagine that? That that must be awful. Do you want to say anything to anybody uh, about uh, your situation right now? Uh well, I think most of the people, at least that I'm seeing in the chat room, probably already know this, but my husband, Mike, passed unexpectedly in June while we were down <laughs> visiting our youngest son. And um, like many of you who have had losses, I'm going through the same steps or similar steps that you are with, you know, grief and as Rosemary says, firsts and highs if you get a message and lows when you don't feel them around or um you know just moments that overtake you and you don't even know why um so it's it's a roller coaster ride is the only way i can explain it it's yeah. not and it's not a fun one <laughs> no no but i'm sure that despite it all your you know your kids are with you which is really great and they're going to make it you know, a, a, a special, they're going to make it special. They're going to make it, it is a first, but it'll be special, but just in a different way, I think. So, all right. So it's story time. So um, I could not, for the life of me, think of a happy story for Christmas, which tells you what kind of childhood I had, but there has to be a happy story. And there has to be a happy uh, a Christmas story. So, um, so I'm going to tell this story, which is really, you know, I don't, I don't want it to sound like I'm saying, oh, look at me, poor me, and how awful it was for me. But I would like to share this story with you because I think that it, you know, it, within this story, uh, it will show that it's about attitude. And it will show also that the most devastating things in life are perhaps only devastating for a while, but they can turn into something that is really fantastic and really wonderful. So I'm going to go back to when I was a little girl. So once upon a time, when I was a little girl, um, I was probably thir 12 or 13, something like that. I had two older sisters and I had a younger sister. So... I should have known better. How many times have we all said that about something that happens to us or, or you, you trust that something's going to happen that's good or you trust, uh, you, you, you trust people implicitly or you trust a situation and then it, it doesn't happen the way you think it should and you think I should have known better. But here we go. So I should have known better because my two older sisters at some point each got a bike first my eldest sister got a bike and a couple of years later the next one down got a bike and then 
couple of years after that, my younger sister got a bike. I, for whatever reason, never got a bike. Okay. Roller skates. <laughs> You're going to love this story. Roller skates. My older sister got roller skates. My next sister down got roller skates. My youngest sister got roller skates, but I never got roller skates. And on and on and on we can go. Throughout my childhood, that was the way that it was. It didn't matter that, you know, uh, it was my turn, so to speak, because there really was really, it was really my turn. It was just how it was. So now it's Christmas, okay? So my oldest sister has had a watch and my next oldest sister's had a watch. It's my turn, right? It's my turn. And um, when we were kids, all, all four of us girls, we used to go hunting for Christmas gifts. And uh, we, we, uh, we'd sort of hunt on the tops of wardrobes. We'd hunt at the backs of cupboards. We would do all sorts of things. We'd hunt. Anyway, this particular year, on the top of my mother's wardrobe was a suitcase and inside the suitcase we found a watch ah oh, now look come on i was so excited because after all it's my turn isn't it you know where this story is going don't you you do know where this story is going this is a happy christmas story right all right so i tell everyone at school i tell all of my friends i am so convinced because after all, it is my turn and I'm sort of 12 or 13 or something like that. And it, it really is. It's my turn and it's only fair. Well, now I tell when my grandson Reese tells me it's not fair, Mosey. And when my daughter used to say to me, it's not fair, mummy. I would say, did I ever tell you that life is fair? Because I am the last person to tell anyone that life is fair. But we can just come back to this wonderful Christmas story. So Christmas morning comes around, okay? You know, I know you know what's going to happen. And I, you know, we all used to have a, a pillowcase with our gifts stuffed in it. And, uh, and out came a book and out came another book and out came whatever else it was. We didn't have a lot for Christmas, but we did have some things for Christmas. And Christmas was usually a nice time for us. But I'm searching right to the very bottom of the sack and it's empty now. And there's, an, there's no watch. And all of a sudden I hear my sister cry. Oh, look what I got. I got a watch. Yes, well, I should have known better, shouldn't I? Because they all had the bikes and they all had the roller skates and they all had the whip and tops and they all had the, all of that stuff, right? Why, oh, why did I hold out in hope for life to be fair? Right. Okay, so I remember not being able to hold it together because the disappointment was so great and I remember at some point my mother standing me by the side of her knee and she, you know, and what can, what can she say, right? And I'm saying, but it's my turn, but it's my turn. It was my turn. And she said to me, well, okay. And she showed me the watch that she had on and her watch had a black face to it. And she said, look, I didn't get you a watch because when I get you a watch, I want to get you a watch that's special to you. And I want you to get, I want to get you a watch with black face. Well, she was lying through her teeth, but I believed it, sort of believed it because I wanted to believe it. Even though I knew she was lying, I wanted to believe it. So now I'm 16 and now I'm 17 and I never got a bike and I never got the roller skates and I never got, <laughs> and I never got the watch with the black face. But when I was able to, and it would be probably be somewhere in my, I don't know, 20s, I was able to afford or I don't remember how I came to get my first watch, of course, with a black face, because that is what I wanted. You know, you go from 12, 13 years old to 10 years later, you're still wanting the thing that you didn't get, that you can't have. And in the back of your mind, you're still hoping for some semblance of, of fairness. 
And I remember having a watch, getting myself a watch with a black face. It wasn't an expensive watch, but it was sort of, it was, it was a, I don't know what it was. It was like a, an achievement. Uh, so finally, I had the watch that I'd never gotten. Finally, I had the watch with the black face. So somehow or another, you know, in my head, my mother had put that little seed in there that this is what I should have or what I should attain to having. Okay, so not a very happy Christmas Day story because it took me ages to get over the fact because every time, of course, every time, every day, I saw my three sisters wearing their watches during the summertime. <coughs> every time they went out, they get on their bikes and go for a bike ride. I was always left behind because I didn't have a bike. So, you know, so it was one of those things that a lot of things happen to a lot of people, right? And, and a lot of times we hold on to those things. I held on to things for a long time. Do you remember when this and when we didn't get that and when dad promised so and so and do you remember when and so on and so forth. And looking back at the things that we didn't have, that we never have, that we, you know, that perhaps other people around us have, but we don't have. And looking back at the unfair things that happened to us in life can be devastating because we can be, we can hold on to those things and we can sort of nurture or harbour without even realising that we're doing it. We can nurture or we can harbour those um those moments when we felt less, when we were made to feel less, whether we were made to feel less deliberately or whether we made to feel less, you know, inadvertently, is not the point. But we tend, if we're not careful, to harbour all of those things and those things start to mount up. And we become, um, you know, a little bit negative Nellies. We start to look at all the things that we didn't have. I, for whatever reason, and people often ask me this question, I, you know, how did you get over dealing with your parents? How did you get over dealing with your child? And no idea really, except that at some point, some on a some subconscious level, at some point, I just must have decided this that way, that route, that negative thinking is simply not for me. What it did was it taught me, of course, naturally, when I'm a mother, and my daughter is it's Christmas time, I go overboard, don't I? Um, she came home from school one day. She was she was about 12 years old, 13 years old, and she'd started playing tennis at school. And a friend of hers had loaned her the tennis racket because I couldn't afford a tennis racket for her. And halfway through the tennis match, she was playing with a friend of hers. Halfway through the tennis match, the friend who'd loaned her the racket came storming onto the tennis court, grabbed the tennis racket from her and said, you can't use it anymore. Uh, So-and-so wants to borrow it. And my daughter was left in the middle of the tennis court, in the middle of a tennis match with, with no tennis racket, not able to play. But the embarrassment of it was really great. She came home, she cried. The next day, even though I could barely afford food for the table, the next day I went out to a cheap store and I got a cheap tennis racket. It was the wrong thing to do in a way because I should have said to her, well, that's life, darling, but I couldn't do it. I went and bought the tennis racket. I'm not sure she ever used it again, but I went and bought the tennis racket. We do things, what we try to do is we try to give our kids a better life than... than uh, than uh, we had. But now I'm looking back to that young girl who didn't have a watch. But you know what? I did have a book. I probably had a pair of slippers because that was always the way. I probably had a new dressing gown. I might have had a new dressing gown. I don't remember. It wasn't that the sack was empty. It was that the one thing that I was hoping for and I knew was mine to have wasn't 
Rosemary, if you can hear me, we cannot hear you. You might have to log out and log back in. All right, folks. Seems we've been having this difficulty a little bit more lately with the internet and Rosemary. So just stay tuned. Start thinking about your questions for the chat room. And uh, if I'm reading this lesson correctly, it's about what have we learned through the hardship. So when she comes back, let's not make the comments so much on how unfair or terrible it was. She's going to want to see, help us see the positives. Sorry, we All just right, let me get you on full screen here, Rosemary. There we go. Sorry. So, um, all right. Did you only lose me or did we lose everybody? Uh, I haven't seen comments to suggest either way. Okay. So, all right, let's get back to the story. So, as I've said, it wasn't about the fact that there was nothing in the sack because there was. There was a book, there were a pair of slippers, probably a dressing gown. There were other things, maybe a, maybe a game or something. But I focused on what was not there. I focused on what should have been mine. Who am I to say it should have been mine? If life had been fair, that watch would have been mine. We know that. But life isn't, is it? So I focused as a kid on what was what was not in the sack rather than what was in the sack. I focused on, you know, what I didn't have rather than what I did have. Over the years, you know, over the next few years and when I became a mother, it became very clear to me, really, really clear to me, that um, life is going to be thoroughly, absolutely, 100% miserable if all I do is focus on what isn't there, what I can't have, what isn't, you know, what isn't. I have to focus on what is, what I do have. When I talk to people who have lost someone, and especially, I mean, Chris, I know this applies to you too. It's so easy for us to focus so much on what isn't there, especially when what isn't there is our loved ones in the spirit world, especially when, you know, I told the story earlier about a 16 year old girl who, who uh, died of a terrible, terrible brain cancer. Um, and her parents focusing on what wasn't there. And when I was able to talk to her and she came through to talk to us from the spirit world, her intent was to say to them, let's, can we focus on what is there? You know, we had all of these years together. We had wonderful and happy years together. It it doesn't make the pain go away, but it eases the pain. Had I been able that Christmas morning, when I was so disappointed, if I had been able then to say, well, I do have a new pair of slippers and, and I do have a new book to read. Uh, if I were to be able to focus on those things, my Christmas day would have been so much happier so much brighter, I would have still been disappointed. The pain of seeing my younger sister getting the watch that by rights, if life were fair, would have gone to me. But life isn't fair. And growing up, I learned that very often I learned it the hard way. But actually, I can tell you that the hard way is probably the best way because the best of the lessons that we learn are the tough lessons of the hard lessons. That Christmas was a miserable Christmas for me because I focused on what I didn't have. What I felt truly should have been mine. I focused, I focused on the injustices of life. This Christmas, here we are, we're coming up to Christmas. My grandson, bless his heart, he's focusing on a homeless woman who sits outside of Whole Foods in New York City, reading a book and just sitting on the cold pavement with no blankets around her. He's focusing on her. He's not focusing what he can't have. He's focusing on what perhaps he can give to her. Of course, he's focusing on the things he wants as well, let's be clear, but we try to teach our children through our experiences. And I think this year, if all of us, because we've all had 
unfair things happen to us in our lives. We've all missed out on something. Every one of us has been disappointed at some point, either for Christmas or birthday or special vacations or just simply disappointed with life. But truthfully, if we focus on what we do have rather than what we don't have, life becomes better and it becomes brighter. And we accept, so life isn't fair. So, well, so what then? So get on with it because it's not going to change anytime soon. For so many people who are suffering with the effects of COVID, uh, quarantined, losing their jobs, being at home instead of being able to socialize. I mean, boy, oh boy, are we focusing. The nation, the world is focusing on what we can't do and what we don't have. That's the point of my story today. Keep focusing on what you don't have. You'll be miserable for the rest of your life. Keep expecting things to change when we know full well they're not going to. Nobody ever bought me a watch with a black face, or at least I don't think they did. If they did, I've forgotten about it. Uh, my watch, you see, my watch does not have a black face because I wouldn't have a black face watch now because I realised that the only reason I wanted a black face watch was because I truly wanted to believe my mother when she told me that I was special and that she was waiting to afford a special watch for me. I really desperately wanted to believe it. We all desperately want to believe that better things are coming, good things are coming. They're more likely come, to come to us if we focus on what we do have rather than what we don't have. Our responsibilities here are to teach our children. We talk about COVID, Reese and I, Samantha, Reese and I. We talk about the effects. We talk about how things are. We try very, very hard to focus on the good things, the fact that we are healthy, the fact that we are well, the fact that we can help other people who are maybe not so fortunate than we are. We focus on what we do have. So this Christmas morning, which will be next Saturday, this Christmas morning, if you're disappointed, if you're sitting on your own because nobody wants to visit you because either you don't have family or or nobody wants to come because of COVID or for whatever reason it is. If you're sitting on your own, are you sitting in a warm place because there are so many people who are not? Do you have food in your cupboard? Because so many people do not. Do you have a television or a computer? Are you, are you able to listen to me now? Because if so, hundreds of thousands of people do not. So, the, the, the moral, if there has to be a moral of this story, there really doesn't have to be a moral, is as a 12-year-old, 12, 13 years old, I remember looking and that's, I can remember to this day the pain and the disappointment of the unfairness of life. And although I excuse myself, because I was only a kid, and although I excuse myself because, you know, what did I didn't know any better, now I do know better. I learned better from then on. So I try very hard and I'm hoping that this Christmas day for all of you, whether you're on your own, whether you're with friends, if there are any disappointments, and there probably will be, you know, because, hey, you know, that's how life works for us. Can you focus on the things that you do have and be grateful for the things that you do have? and be joyful in the things that you do have. Because somewhere, as a very good friend of mine once said to me, if you listen very carefully, no matter how low you are, no matter how down you are, if you listen very, very carefully, there's always someone knocking down below. In other words, there's always someone who is worse off than you. So swallow your disappointments, Focus on what you do have. Focus on the joy. You know, hey, you're breathing, right? <laughs> you, you can smile, right? You can pray to God. You have a mind that is working and working well. 
Let's focus on the things that we do have and make this Christmas the best ever. The end. Chris, right. how are you doing? Doing well. Um, Annika says, it's not for nothing, they say. Every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> yeah. And I know that from experience, too. It's so true. Annika, that's so true. So, so true. Ellen says, thank you for a wonderful story and reminder. Lorraine says, love, love these heartwarming stories as life lessons. We've all had hard lessons and wonderful, joyful times as well. Balance is a requirement and gratitude a priority. Yes, well, the word gratitude, I love that word because, uh, you know, when we're sitting in our homes complaining that we can't go out and there are no parties this year, but we're in our homes, aren't we? Wait a minute, we have a home. Wait a minute, we have somewhere to be. So many people don't. So, you know, so we, if you, if it's so hard, isn't it? You get into this habit of thinking about, you know, the things that we don't have or can't do, or we, it's a, it's habit forming. And I would love to see the habit turned around Let's uh, let's have let's develop the habit of being uh, grateful of having gratitude. Chris, Aslan says gratitude for or says yes gratitude for all the blessings. Barbara says this makes so much sense. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm inspiring people, so that's good. <laughs> Cheryl says, when I was 12, our house burnt down and oh. all my, quote, things. But what I was more upset about was the missing kitties who lived in the basement. Oh, dear. My mom told us they burned the house on purpose because they could not afford to keep it. I fretted for years about those kitties, not the things. Well, you're such a wonderful person, aren't you, darling? I mean, you know, we Let's hope, let's hope your parents thought to take them out of the basement. But, you know, animals are very resilient. So, you know, they may well have found a, a way to get out of there. Chris, keep going. Rhonda says, I know that the difficult things we go through in life as an adult or child shape us and teach us lessons to become a better person. But wow, some are so painful. That's so true. That I mean, I have to say that although the pe the watch was painful at the time, <laughs> it was only a momentary thing. I have to say. I mean, you know, it's funny though how the little things can really eat away at you. And and when I hear people talking, you know, you you hear of people who are in their forties, fifties, sixties, even in their eighties, who are talking about what didn't happen when they were kids, what they didn't have when they were kids, not using it, not, I mean, you know, I, I talked to Risa, I talked to Samantha about my childhood, but I try to tell these stories to inspire and to say, you know, come on, it's not the end of the world and these things may well happen to you, but you can, you know, you're strong enough to deal with them. But when I hear people telling stories and they have this poor me, this entitlement, but I was a child. I should that I should have had that. I could have spent my entire life built around the fact that I should have had that watch. <laughs> really, and people do it. I see people do it all the time. They hang on to the one thing that they didn't get or they didn't have, and they build their life around it. And and resentment and frustration and anger and then of course bitterness come into play. And I was very fortunate because I had a mother who did exactly that. She built her entire life around the things that she didn't have, that she thought she was entitled to. The resentment and the anger and the bitterness. And you could see it in her face. So I was very fortunate that my mother had such an awful time of it because, boy, oh, boy, it taught me how not to be. So, you know, we have to get into the habit of always trying if we can to look at, at the brighter side of things. Carolyn is asking, have your older sisters ever acknowledged how they felt this was unfair? Do you have a good relation with your older sisters? No, um, <laughs> no actually, they don't talk to me. 
uh, which is fine. I don't actually... Uh, that that actually isn't fair of me to say that. That's not fair of me to say that. Um, I remember when we were all in our sort of, I don't know, 20s, early 20s or something, and we're for, for whatever reason, we were all sitting together in my parents' home and talking about our childhood and so on and so forth. And none of us had a great child. My sister, my youngest sister probably had the better of the... Uh, better childhood but they were all talking about it and then all of a sudden one of my sisters said well she had it worse and I thought they meant my mother and my mother suffered worse and so and I you know I looked at her and I said who who are you talking about and she looked at me and she said well you and my three sisters all acknowledged that I, you know I was the I was the kicking post I was the scapegoat I was the, you know that was who I was very often there is one in the family. You may be listening to me thinking, yes, that happened to me too. But again, we can spend our lives being resentful of it or we can be grateful uh, about it. When my mother died, my, my mother's wishes to my three sisters was that I should be cut out of the will. Not that there was ever a will, there was never a will written, but they, she told them all I was not allowed to have anything. Um, not that I needed anything, but I was so disappointed in them because I really felt that this would have been the opportunity for them all to get together and say, no, we're going to be fair, you know, we're not going to continue this meanness and this nastiness, you know, uh, we need to be fair, but unfortunately they didn't do that and so you know that or they go their way and and I go my way and that's great it's a, it's a good thing because i don't hold any resentment for any of them i mean when you grow up in a childhood like that and you see this stuff going on it affects everybody differently doesn't it so you know they have their way of living and I have my way of living and um, and I hope that they're happy I really do I hope that they're happy I hope that they're healthy I occasionally get to talk to my uh, my nieces or nephews on a very rare occasion uh, which is nice because they're, they're nice they're good kids um, and um, you know uh, I of course I've got my brother the younger of my two brothers who's much older than I am and I get to talk to him when I go to England we always visit uh his wife's family have been here to visit us so you know it's not it's not all lost you know uh and I think often that we you know there's that old saying we can we can uh, choose our friends but we can't choose our family and uh you know my I have fabulous wonderful friends who are more like family to me than uh, than my own family are and um i do have to say when people come to me and they say oh you're just like family to us i do have to cringe a bit and think no, i hope not not, not <laughs> my family <laughs> but they mean they mean it as a compliment i'm thinking oh, oh no don't say that to me <laughs> chris what do you think <laughs> about that comment yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well isn't that so interesting though because the person who's saying it most likely had a wonderful childhood and yeah. still has great family relations so to them yeah. it's the highest accolade not even realizing that there are <laughs> right. not even comprehending that there could be people out there who didn't <laughs> really I know. It's like, you know, people say, oh, you just like family to me. And I immediately, my head immediately goes to, oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, no, don't do that to me. I don't want to be your family. I'd much rather be your friend because I can do a much better job as your friend. Although my my family, my uh, we have a, a family of three of us. And uh the Altea family, Re says. We are the Altea family, Mosey. And uh, we are the Altea family. And we have an amazing, fantastic, and a wonderful relationship. We all do. We're, we're just, you know, we're, yeah, we, we, yeah, we have a great, great family. So I'm not, a, please don't get the impression that I'm against families, because I'm absolutely not, because my own family is a joy to me. 
Chris, let's move on before we see, before I say anything and get myself in really hot water here. <laughs> well, um, I'm I'm scrolling back up to uh, early parts of the chat when you were talking about the sausage story. And so people are giving comments such as, wow, now I need to go out and buy sausages or someone else's. I bought sausages. Um, Judith is saying, haha, I've had the same experience with my dog, Zasu and chicken breasts. Oh, yeah. Um, Cheryl says kitties can do the same food stealing only with their paws. So animal lovers out there truly understand that story. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I'll say it again. My darling Nino, <laughs> it was probably the best Christmas he ever had. The strange thing was that he didn't throw it up. He wasn't sick. He should have been because he must have had a pound of sausages plus the bacon on top of that. But anyway, <laughs> it was uh, it was funny to see this sort of this brown nose sort of, you know, so very still, very quiet, not making a fuss, knowing that if he was really still and really quiet, he could sort of inch his nose up there and take that one sausage. So that just put that, and you could see his mind was was going, and he he was never a sneaky dog. But those I was going to say that he's such a good boy. He was wonderful, best one of the best puppies I've ever ever had. He and uh, Cachorro, uh, the were amazing and of course rosie I better you know, better stop now because i don't want to have any i don't want people to say i've got <laughs> favorites but nino was my boy if you couldn't find nino look for me and if you couldn't find me look for nino that's how it was we you know he stuck to me like glue and kachura was the same way feather was really bad <laughs> she'd go to anybody <laughs> she was so disloyal <laughs> you know <laughs> but but she was lovely just the same in in her own uh, little way but yeah i mean we love our puppies don't we it's going to be difficult for me i think the reason i, I woke up this morning thinking about couture and i've been thinking about him over the last few days and i saw him a couple of days ago uh it's of course this will be our very first christmas without puppies and we usually have a stocking you know we put stockings up and there's usually a stocking for at least one puppy, if not two. And last year, of course, Nino was still around. He he passed uh, just after Christmas. So, you know, tough, very tough. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, they're worth it. They cause a lot of pain and a lot of heartache. It's awful when we lose them, but they are. They give us such joy. See, here's the thing. See that? We're looking at the pain and we're looking at the difficulties and then we're moving to, but they gave us so much joy. So, you know, acknowledge, accept, uh, by all means, embrace the tough stuff. Embrace it. Don't be afraid to embrace it. You know, don't turn away from it and pretend it didn't happen. Embrace it. <clears throat> and then look for what came out of that. Because, you know, after pain, there's always joy. No matter what, there is. Chris. Uh, so there were a number of people all saying thank you for the story and that they loved the story. Dean added, listen to Bing Crosby and Roseberry Clooney sing about counting your blessings on White Christmas. Oh, I love that movie. Dean, I love that movie. Don't you really? It's one of the best. We should all watch that movie over, over the Christmas uh, period, the Christmas and New Year. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. You know what my grandson <laughs> called me yesterday, a couple of days ago, and he looked at me and said, Mosey, I finally made my list and sent it on to Santa. So I said, okay, what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. He said, I said, what did you put on the list, darling? He said, well, and he told me two or three things, and then he said, snow. <laughs> what? I said, what? What do you mean, snow? He said, well, I asked Santa to put, you know, I put snow on my list because I've asked Santa, Santa if it can snow, preferably on Christmas Day, but it doesn't matter if it's not on Christmas Day, but sometime over Christmas, I'd really love some snow. <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> please don't let it snow till I come back to Florida. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes, you put down snow. Okay, Chris, keep going. 
Uh, Judith says, reaching the understanding of thankfulness usually takes a few years of life for most of us. Well, yes. And, uh, you know, well, you know, I look at my grandson. He's eight years old. He'll be nine in February. And, um, you know, I think this happens not um, my grandson, of course, is the best ever. Uh, of course, I'm going to say that I'm his grandmother, aren't I? He's mine, so he is the best. But I think that children sometimes say things to us or they they say something uh, that is that can be so inspirational and so right on and so knowledgeable. And you wonder where did the wisdom come from when they say these things, you know? What makes them think these things? But I think, you know, out of the mouths of babes, you know, come so many truths and so many uh, incredible uh, and inspirational things. And I do think that we should listen to our children more. Chris? Oh, I'm totally with you on that. With my nephew staying with me, there are certain things that come out of his mouth that are like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and we don't... Have, we don't expect it, do we? I don't know why we don't. You know, we, we think that we're the adults and they're the kids. So what do they know? But they know so much. So, you know, sometimes uh, kids can be so, so very, very wise. So we should listen to them more. Well, their okay. skills of observation are oh. amazing. Well, you know, I, to I told the story the other day about the old lady who's, who's a homeless lady who sits outside of Whole Foods and, uh, I'm telling my daughter what Reese told me, and she looked at me and she said, I've never seen an old lady. <laughs> and um, I said, well, you know, ask, ask uh, Reese about it, because, you know, yeah, it's definitely. And uh, so, so she did ask him, and he looked at her, he said, you've seen her, mummy. And she said, no, I haven't. He said, but, you, uh, but we go, you know, every time we go by there, she's there. Uh, so I think kids can be so much more observant about these things than, than adults. Yeah. Barbara says, you asked me to update you on my Yorkie, Tommy. Yes. How's he doing? He's in the hospital in Jacksonville and they are running tests. Okay. I had a, had a lot of energy in eating. The doctors are looking to see why his liver enzymes are high. Okay. All right. Well, keep... Darling, keep us posted. We want to know about this little puppy and we are sending healing. Okay, Chris. All right. Uh, Carolyn says, my final comment about your story and message today is thank uh -oh. you. Oh, Carolyn, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. Okay. <laughs> Betta says, dear Rosemary, I would like to ask you a question. Will I be able to carry out my project that I care so much in the next future with help of my friend, Christina. Can Grey um, Eagle please tell me? Yes, you will be able to carry it out if you choose to. So if you put your heart and soul into it and you make a determination and you just do it better, it'll work, it'll work out. But don't get lazy about it. Don't, don't, don't have those days when you think, oh, I can't manage this, I can't do this, because that will be your downfall. So go forward positively, go forward determinedly, and if you truly want it, you can have it. Chris. Maggie has listed a few of the favorite Christmas musics that she likes. White Christmas, Holiday Inn, Bells of St. Mary, Going My Way, Donovan's Hi Reef, Hang on, we're into Bing Crosby here, and sounds good to me. Keep going. Uh, Brigadoon and an affair to remember. Oh yeah! Wow, yeah, very nice. I, I'm all. I'm there with you. Can you send me that list? <laughs> I could go through it slowly. They're the sorts of things you just want to watch, or you would just want to listen to. Oh yeah, Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. It is such a special time for so many of us. It's a very special time for me. Chris. Vicky says, my eight-year-old grandson, hold on, we just scrolled, has Asperger's and his wisdom is beyond measure. Oh, I no. listen to him often. Oh, 
how wonderful, how wonderful that is. Uh, good for you and good for him. Tell him I'm sending love, would you? Keep going, Chris. Annika says, I was so happy you were able to connect with my darling Neil in last week's webinar. I would like to connect again and again. Are our loved ones just as eager to connect with us with your help and your experience? Without a doubt. Yes. Yes, without a doubt. They always have lots to tell us. They always, you know, why wouldn't they want to communicate? Absolutely, they would. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the webinar last week. Uh, was it actually worth going to the webinar? Uh, sounds to me like it was. Chris. Barbara says, I have been a fan of Rosemary since the 90s, watched every show she was on, bought every book, and oh, read wow. them over and over. I can't believe I can be here and engage live. Oh, Barbara, well, I'm, I'm just pleased to have you here. Are you a groupie? I love groupies. I hope you're a groupie. I hope you'll keep being a groupie. I hope you'll keep following me because we love to have you here and thank you for thank you for writing that. That's really nice to know. You know, uh, I was uh, where was I? I was in the I was in the uh, was I in the West Indies? I was uh, I was in somewhere or another. I, I've been in where else have I been to? I've been to India. I've been to to Hong Kong. I've been all over the place this week. Yeah, well, yes, this week, and not one bit of it by plane. Uh, but those in the spirit world will take me there to meet with their families, with their loved ones, and um, and that it's so it's so great. Uh, the uh, I had a, a consultation with a, a wonderful couple in India, and uh, that you know I said, "How did you find me?" And they looked at me as if I was crazy. But, but you're famous, they said, as if I should know that. But you're famous. Well, of course I am, you see. You don't know. People don't know that I am known all over the world. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, all we all we can do is to do what we do. And the spirit world will always, always, always be ready and willing to to uh, to talk to us whenever we are. All right, Rosemary, this is from Jenny. Jenny says, I'm struggling with grief leading up to Christmas. Rosemary, could you try and connect with my son? I need to hear validation. If he says why, please, my heart hurts. Well, I think, what is this lady's name again? This is Jenny. Jenny. I think Jenny... I do understand what you what you're asking, and I do understand why you're asking. And I don't think anybody would actually want to say why. Um, I do not. It would be so easy for me now to just tell you something nice. Oh, yes, I see your son here. Oh, yes, here he is. And he's sending lots of love. But I actually don't. And <clears throat> I always try to be as clear and as honest as possible about these things. But um, if you can um, perhaps connect on Thursday, on our Thursday show, I'm not promising anything. But I'm going to ask Gregor if we could find, even if it's one moment in time, uh, to maybe uh, check this out for you. I'm not promising anything. But uh, I do understand. And of course, you know, I think for so many of us, Christmas is the worst time in the world because everybody else is having such a great time, it seems. Everybody's enjoying themselves, it seems. Just remember, though, that things are not always what they seem to be. Um, and, uh, you know, people are having a happy time and we are so desperate and so devastated and so lonely and so alone. But I, wait a minute, because now I, because I, because I do want you to remember your son's smile. And when he smiles, his eyes light up. 
when he smiles, he makes me smile as I see him smiling. So there you are. I was, thought I wasn't going to do anything this morning, but apparently I am doing something for you. I know it's not enough. We don't have time on these shows to do in nearly enough. You might want to consider finding someone and having a consultation with them, or you might want to consider joining our webinars at some point. Uh, <clears throat> if we give our loved ones in the spirit world if we open the door for them they they will often walk in so so uh i have a message here uh from your son and i was wondering am i right is it just because i want to give you something because well i'm a mom and of course i do want to give you something but Grail, <coughs> Grail has put his hand on my shoulder so your son is showing me a star i can see him holding out a star and he's talking about hanging the star so if you haven't already done it could you please hang the star and whenever you see the star moving or shining he tells me to tell you he's going to that's him tapping the star to let you know that he's around you always around you and growing apparently he's growing he's growing tall and strong so there you have it uh, i don't know if that will help you i hope that it does but if you didn't get that star hung yet you better get it hung okay chris well we're coming right up on time rosemary okay well then i think that was a good that was a a good time to end it if if generally that meant that message meant anything to you and it was a very brief message i'm sorry it was but if it meant anything to you at all please let us know um <clears throat> because i know that for those of for those of you who have lost a child this has to be one of the worst times ever but i want you to think about that little boy's smile not so little apparently uh, i want you to think of the smile I want you to think of the uh, when he smiles, lighting up his eyes and all the joy and the wonder that he brought to you when you held him in your arms. Can you can you focus on can you focus on that? And I know it's a tough thing to do for all of you out there who've lost a child, uh, boys, girls, angels, all of them. For for all of you, if you can focus on the joy that they bring, um, and smile for that. My heart goes out to all of you. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, there'll be no story time next week because you'll be all having your own stories in your own homes. And we'd love to hear some of those stories. If you find time to email us, we would like to, to hear about it. Um, Chris, K-R-I-S at rosemaryaltair.com. Yeah, that's right, right? Yes, or Rosemary, you know, did you want to hear back from Jenny? Sure. Um, Jenny said that her son died just after delivery 34 years ago, and your message did resonate because her other children and she would always put a star on top of the tree. There you are. There you are. So hang the star. So, but I, darling, I don't see him as, I want to say little boy, but I don't see him as little boy. I'm told he's grown tall and strong. Isn't that nice? And we'll be with you at Christmas time. So when I'm looking at him and when I see him, uh, I, you know, although I wanted to say your little boy, he'll always be your little boy. I also want to say he's grown tall and strong. So isn't that nice for you? I hope, I hope, I hope that gives you a very, very Merry Christmas to know that he's around you. And that uh, when you hang that star, he's watching you. But keep watching that star because it'll move. I promise you, his finger will be just poking it here and there, you know, <laughs> letting you know that he's around. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Jenny, for responding. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we will be back here on Thursday morning uh, with another of uh, the Spirit World Sees All. Um, and if I don't see you then, please, all of you, have a wonderful uh, and amazing holidays. I know many of you celebrate Hanukkah. I know many of you celebrate Christmas. We all of us have our own different holidays to celebrate. But for those of us who celebrate Christmas, me, 
and me and me if i had more hands i'd put them up as well please all of you out there have a very wonderful and a very very uh grateful joyful and happy holidays and uh if we don't see you on um <coughs> excuse me if we don't see you on thursday we'll see you whenever it is the following saturday or whenever just keep watching for us because we'll be keep popping up thank you to chris thank you for uh you know doing a great job today i'd like to say thank you also of course to great eagle <coughs> i'd like to say thank you to our angels who do take care of us because we don't very often think of them do we or if we do we forget to say thank you and i'd like to say uh, a wonderful thanks to that god force that is out there for giving us uh, our blessed blessed savior jesus christ uh who i have a very wonderful and a very personal relationship with as i know many of you do uh so thank you thank you thank you all of you for joining us and hopefully we'll see you on thursday please everybody have a very blessed rest of the day have a very blessed weekend everybody bye bye